Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it severely overbought because that's exactly what this market is. It is severely overbought. Now, we've been up for four very strong days in a row. Can it become even more overbought? Yes, but uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. And just for some perspective, let me just show you something. Came across this tweet by Charlie Bellello. And he was talking about the S&P 500. I'm going to focus today, this week, on the Dow Industrials. But he was talking about the S&P 500 being up at least 1% in each of the last four trading days. And going back to 1928, this has only happened 15 times. And what's really interesting about that is, okay, so this, this last week was the 15th time. The 14th time was November of 2020. So, you know, about a year and a half ago, prior to that, it hadn't happened since August or the fall of 1982. So this whole cycle wave five up from August of 1982, it hasn't been happening until now, this, this last push up from March 2020. So we'll, uh, it's going to be really interesting to see where we go uh, from here, but we are definitely getting a heavy duty dose of volatility in here. So four days in a row, extremely overbought. Here's the only wave picture I've got on the Dow Industrials. I, I still believe that we are trying to flush out a Manu Wave 3 to the downside. The Dow was uh, up 274 points on Friday, up 1,807, well, let's just say 11, 1,811 for the, for the week. Big strong move. The real question is, are we going to continue to get some follow through? Now, we may get some follow through for this next week, maybe for a few days. We'll see. I mean, we've had some big moves before and you just don't get anything the following week or you get minimal. Uh, well, we'll just see what we get. But right now, I know that we are very, very overbought. And uh, let's just drill down and take a look at the daily uh, count that I've got here. Here's what I'm looking at. I think we've had wave one. Wave two back here in early February peaking, and then we're working our way down with one two. Now this one two, uh, I'm a little bit cautious. I don't like to see when it starts to get more than when I start to get three one twos in a row. And here's what I'm talking about. Like let's say we got one two, and we're doing one two. We start getting another one two, then I start to really get very suspicious that something else is going on. And we started to do that as we started getting into this and it became more complex. I mean, the, the wave two correction without a doubt became more complex. And so here's what I think is going on. I think we have a double zigzag. I think we have a W, X, Y for a double zigzag in terms for this wave two right here. And we've pulled back. Let's just see how deep this wave two is as a percent of wave one. So we're talking about this move right here as a percent of wave one, we've gone fairly deep. We're beyond 61.8 percent. Uh, and so, you know, right now, what am I on with with my members? We are on reversal watch. Am I just because I think it's overbought? Am I going to sit back and say, no, we ought to sell? No, you know, I'm waiting for the market to reverse and start to turn south. OK, so that's what I'm watching for right now because we are severely overbought. Let's take a look at, I've been saying that, so let's take a look at the McClellan Oscillator. Here's why I say that. When I look at the McClellan Oscillator, we are sitting up here at a plus 230 as of the close on Friday. That, and when you get above one, plus 150, you are in severely overbought territory. When you get below minus 150, you're in severely oversold territory. So right now, when I look at this, this is the most overbought that we've been since June 8th of 2020. Okay, the most overbought since June 8th of 2020. Now, when I look at the summation index, the summation index is a cumulative. Let me move this over just a little bit. It is a cumulative of the McClellan oscillator. So we're down here in the negative territory, minus seven, minus about 1500, 1497. That is an indication of the strong selling pressure that has been going on here. 
since the beginning of the year, and we continue to be down here. We've turned up here the last couple of days, mainly because of the move that's happened over the last four days. Uh, we'll see where we go, but to me, a strong indication of the negative selling pressure, just like back here. And if you scroll back, which I'm not going to do right now, but you know the next one where we had a lot of negativities back in the fall, fall of 2018. Okay, let's take a look at the at the ten year yield. Okay, so we got this very strong move in the market this week. We had the Federal Reserve meeting. Everybody knows what happened as a as a result of that. So it's it's kind of interesting. It's almost like the market just kind of knew what was coming, maybe waiting to see if anybody surprised them with a half point, uh, you know, a rate increase, but that didn't happen. Uh, but, you know, here we are sitting with massive, with a pretty steady increase, pretty steady dose of rate increases anticipated for the rest of the year and even into 2023 and beyond. And they haven't even started talking about what they're going to do with the balance sheet yet, which is that you know, continues to be at historic highs. But here's what the 10-year yield. The 10-year yield is sitting at 2.15%. Now, when I look at this on a weekly basis, let me bring that over and let me just blow that out. So this is the highest weekly close since, I'm looking at my notes, since the week of March 19th, 2019. Okay, so you got to go all the way back into here to get in terms of where we closed, you know, above, you know, we're back over into here. I believe I wrote down March 19th. Hold on a second. Nope, correction, May 19th, not March 19th. <laughs> May 19th, 2019. Anyway, we're sitting pretty high. The other thing I noticed in here, we had this, this uh, resistance zone that I had talked about, and I, we broke above it. We didn't quite, you know, we, we, pulled right back down into it a couple weeks ago, and then we have launched back out of it again. What's interesting is the highs that happened when, as we pulled out of it, and let me kind of zoom in a little bit, they are right in line with my next resistance area that we were talking, that I had identified right in here, this zone right here at 2051. And that was very, very close to the highs that achieved. And then we broke above that with this last week's price action that happened. So now, are we going to make a run at this long-term trend line? It's going to be real interesting to see. And then as we, if we do, what do we do as we approach it? You know, do we back off? Do we, uh, do we break through it? I don't know. That's uh, We're sitting up here at, uh, what, about... 282 or so, depending on where you uh, put your pointer, but you know, just say around 280. Okay, so we'll see how much follow through we get here on the 10 year yield. And of course, if this continues to push up, it's going to affect a whole lot of things, including evaluations and uh, you know, tech stocks and all of that stuff. All right, let's take a look at the dollar index. So you know, the dollar index, this has been moving up and the dollar index is just kind of stalled out a little bit, but it's really doing what I've been expecting it to be doing. OK, on the here's a here's a daily chart You know, I've got it in an impulse wave move to the upside in here. But right now I've been looking at this as being in a fourth wave. We got a very sharp wave two here and I'm talking about within the fifth minute wave up within minor wave three. So right now I'm looking at this as, you know, consolidations going on. You could say A, B, C. Is it doing a triangle? Unsure at this point, but it definitely looks like it's doing a sideways type of move, which is perfect for alternation with a sharp correction that happened for wave two. So when this is done, I'm expecting at least one more push up here complete the, the fifth wave, complete minor wave three, then we'll get bigger corrections. So that's what's going on with the, uh, with the dollar index. I still think it's in a, 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 an impulsive wave uh, higher. Okay, so that is the picture there. I want to take a look at China this weekend because uh, the Shanghai Composite, they had some pretty serious panic selling at the beginning of this week. Let me pull that up. 
Okay, this is a weekly chart of the Shanghai Composite, and this is all the data I've got on it. And you can see this big blow-off peak that happened here in uh, October of 2007. And of course, you know, we, that's when our markets all, all peaked in October of 2007 for, uh, you know, prior to the, uh, the financial crisis, which is what everybody calls it, of 2008 into 2009. So for the longest time, I was thinking, well, maybe we finished the correction here. Maybe we're starting off on some new bull move. But a few weeks ago, I reevaluated and said, no, I don't think this is done. And I think what's really going on with this is a big ABC cycle wave pattern. You know, nice, big, zigzag, five wave, three wave for wave B. And now we're working our way down here for a wave C, for a five wave. Now, again, a five wave, a wave C can be a, an impulse or an ending diagonal. We'll see how it plays out. But right now, I would the way I've got this, I think it is in the third intermediate wave of the third primary wave. And then lo and behold, what kind of price action are we getting? We're getting pretty severe breakdowns. And then... Here's last week, the week before. So this is the week of March 6th. They were closed for a whole week. Is this? I think that's back in here somewhere. But this is the week of March 6th. We broke this trend line. Actually, that shouldn't be here. That should be right there. There we go. That's a little better. And then look at the kind of follow through we got this week. We gapped down at the open beginning of the week. And we, there's that panic that went on Monday into Tuesday, I believe. It was down almost 300 points below where it closed for the week. So we had a pretty big snap back at the end of the week. But this still looks very negative to me. It looks like one, two, we're in a third wave of a third wave of a third wave. So we're getting some pretty strong price action to the downside. I expect it to continue. So... That's the picture on the Shanghai Composite. Uh, we'll continue to monitor that on a weekly basis. All right, that's it for this weekend. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this kind of information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website and check out the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.